Hello and welcome to student-led authentic media news, the best source of truth for our youth. With the Decision 19 election coming up fast, it's time to get to know your presidential candidates and their views. Today, we bring you exclusive interviews with those presidential candidates. And now, over to Thea. Hello, I'm here with the presidential candidate of the Nuclear Party, Josiah Matos. Josiah, a major plank of your party is to replicate different European governmental structures to have a safer country. And how would you adapt some of these like European ideals to fit our current governmental structure? Some of the um, some of the laws and uh, structures that they have in uh, Europe is uh, stricter driving laws, uh, stricter gun laws. Uh, like they're uh, they're very very restrictive. You need to go through extensive processes to get permits for guns. Um, extensive promises, uh, extensive um, like tests and procedures to get a driver's license. Uh, you need thirty. Every driver needs thirty hours worth of driving uh, before they can get a driver's license. And I just feel like this will uh, decrease um, like the death rates between or uh, accident rates, injury rates between. Um, teens uh, it'll make a safer make the roads safer for uh, young drivers adult drivers elderly drivers um, and it just makes overall the uh, experience of driving in our city um, easier because it's not so easy to get a license anymore and not anyone can get one anymore so our next question was implementing an entirely new energy system in America would be extremely expensive to do all at once right away so how would you plan on funding the installment of nuclear energy um, so I guess the first step would be like slowly decreasing the amount of uh, gasoline powered generators, uh, electric generators that we have. So uh, we would just decrease them, we would update them and uh, slowly convert like big companies like Pico and their power generators into uh, start like start uh, installing nuclear energy uh, generators that are powered by nuclear energy and then give off um, electrical energy and start using that. We start with the big companies and we slowly start merging into like their branches and their different districts that they have. Um, this just allows it so it's, we, it gives us enough time where we can um, work and experiment and see where things went wrong and we can fix them in a smaller scale rather than just throwing it all on, on across the U.S. Thank you so much, Josiah Matos. Hello, I'm here with the presidential candidate of the Equity Party, Amaya Woodard. Amaya, Bernie Sanders mentioned in his endorsement of you that you have almost the exact same views as him, which is why he supports you. If your views align so directly with the Democratic candidate, what inspired you to create a separate party? The reason why I started a separate party is because it's always good to get everybody else's opinion, you know? So I wanted to like try something different, try something new instead of like coming from his perspective. I wanted him to like see like my perspective of what I thought of the whole situation. You have been very adamant about imposing more taxes on wealthier citizens. And in a country where around 20% of citizens are considered upper class, how would they benefit from contributing more of their money to the federal government? Oh, of like how would they do that? How would it help them? How would it help them? Mm -hmm. um, are you talking about like taxes? Mm -hmm. Like how would that help? I mean, taxes. Uh, um, Texas. Okay. I think she's asking like <laughs> one of your planks is taxing the rich more okay. than they already are. Uh -huh. How do you plan on getting wealthier people to vote for you? Because they would have to give more of their money. Like, why would you want to vote for somebody who's making you pay more taxes? Like, how do you plan on getting the wealthier vote? Um, by raising the minimum wage? Or no? I'm here with the presidential candidate of the party party, Jack Egan. So Jack, at your convention you stated that if elected, you would eliminate the electoral college system. And our question for you was what systems would you create to effectively replace the Electoral College? Essentially what we want to do is we feel like the Electoral College system is more of a winner-take-all type of deal and less of a represent representation type of process. And what we want to do is we want to make it uh, more proportionate. So let's say 40% of the votes go to one party, 10% go to another party, 
and then 50 go to another party. We want to break it up more proportionally instead of just that 50 percent getting all of the votes so that everyone's opinion is represented and that we can make it more fair and more ideas are uh, in our government and we can uh, just be more innovative instead of a two-party system where just two forces are fighting each other. Thank you. Um, another question that we had is you have been focusing a lot around restrictions on opioid use and there's still uh, very high addiction rates in our country during this opioid crisis. So what are some of the concrete steps that you're going to take to battle the opioid epidemic and how do you plan on further restricting opioid accessibility? Essentially what we want to do is we feel like the big problem is the manufacturing companies that are just handing out prescriptions because doctors are getting paid more if they hand out that number of prescriptions. So by stopping that and eliminating that incentive to hand out more prescriptions to make more money, it would be less likely that there would be more opioids on the streets. And we can't make it less addictive because it's already out there, but taking that away would make it more possible to have less of those drugs out there in circulation and have the availability decrease substantially. Thank you so much, Jack Egan.